Hello everyone, it's Krithik here from IT Rebels and in this video we are going to learn about HTML. So let's start. What is an HTML? HTML is an hypertext markup language. It helps us in building basic structure and object in our website and designs. So what are the use of HTML? Creating a basic structure. We use HTML to create a basic structure in our website and mobile application. We can use HTML in our, to build our desktop application too, thanks to Electron.js. Uh, no worries, we can see Electron.js late, in later sessions. More use of HTML other than web development. Let's see what it is. So there are two outgrowing uh, services in uh, today's market like SEO and blogging. Uh, in this uh, SEO and blogging, we, use, uh, we also use HTML. Let's see how it is. We use uh, HTML in blogging and SEO. We use different type of HTML tags to format our blog post. Basic HTML knowledge can help you do a lot in blogging. So let's see what SEO meta tag is. HTML meta tags help search engine to showcase the, de the detail of your website pages. So let's see what how they do it. So SEO meta tag generate uh, we can provide different keywords, blog description, page description, content description, experts, social media images like when you share your link on different social media, uh, it will give some description about uh, that link and provide an image for that link. So we can provide that using uh, featured image and other and can always provide meta description, meta title. So this is how a uh, meta description look like in when someone search uh, something on internet on Google. So this site has provided this meta tag inside the search engine. So we are just getting this thing and this is title and you can always see the uh, links here so all these website have provided meta description and meta title so we are displaying this on search engine the google is displaying this details on search engine let's continue we see saw seo meta tags now let's see what are seo semantic tags so seo semantic tags a good looking website helps you to earn more and a planned layout will help you to reach more users so a good looking website always have a good looking uh, layouts too and this layer uh, this uh, semantic tags helps you describe more about this layout so when we use a navigation bar we provide it inside a nav tag have you ever think about how google uh, crawl a website uh, there are certain bots uh, robots which took data from uh, from your website and this uh, stores their data in google database and then uh, display uh, when someone search about your website it will display on their uh, search engine so this is how it all search engine works and when we provide uh, some data in semantic tags uh, so in semantic tags uh, the robots will know that this is about navigation bar so it, it will uh, extract all the links from navigation bar uh, and inside header it will display type uh, it will take your title from the header and um, from description uh, from article tag it will take blog description so whenever someone search about uh, your uh, which is which uh, keywords found in your blog it will uh, uh, give it will provide your uh, your link to uh, their search result that's how uh, the search engine helps uh, html help in search engine on page seo so it is a site tag uh, whenever we want something not such important we provide it aside so that's why we are displaying aside here let's see where can you learn all of this so we uh, i will pr be providing learning resources uh, in our description you can always check out so the i want to provide two major dis uh, learning resources one is w3 school uh, they have a very well documented and easy to learn website uh, where you can learn html and many other different pro programming languages there is mdn docs by mozilla fire uh, mozilla fire you maybe have heard about that browser so the developer uh, .mozilla.org provide MDN docs uh, where you can find uh, different type of documents uh, related to programming resources. Third, uh, the YouTube channels. There are ma many YouTubers uh, who, who want to teach their viewers how to program. So the my, I learned from Net Ninja, uh, which provide programming resources in English language, and 
Thapa Technical and Code with Harry. If you want to learn programming and HTML in Hindi, so you can always go there and learn from them. And of course, in this video, we are, we are also going to learn about HTML. Uh, so let's start. Hello everyone, it's Kritik here from iTables. Let's continue learning our HTML. So we already know HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language and why HTML is a, are the basic building blocks of a web and it helps us building a basic structure of a website content, website or any application content. I want you to know that there is uh, something called CSS styling and JavaScript function for functionality. CSS help us to style our website like this is uh, this whole display uh, the content is displaying uh, is created by HTML and it is displayed in this cool manner by using styles. Uh, so they used uh, CSS to do that. Now JavaScript provide various functionality like when we click on ch change uh, language uh, it can help us to change a language for this website. Like I want to, I don't understand Duke, but let's change it to Duke. As you can see, the site is changed to Dutch. Now we go, let's go back because I don't understand this. As you can see, JavaScript provides us various functionality, uh, from animation to displaying something as per uh, condition. So, what is hypertext? Hypertext is uh, why we call uh, HTML as a hypertext because it provides linking behavior because of its linking behavior. HTML uh, help uh, uh, in connecting web pages uh, either internally or uh, externally. Uh, like when we share our social uh, our website links on social media, we are just we are using uh, external linking when we are linking a uh, home page to an about page we are in linking our website web pages internally so this is all because of our anchor tag uh, we will see that anchor tag uh, which provide us linking which provide a linking behavior so html use markup to annotate text okay so why we call why markup is there in html so what is markup uh, it will it will tell the browser that uh, we want to display something like this uh, so display it properly uh, so there are various html tags like head tag title tag body tag header tag footer tag article tag session tag paragraph tag division tag span tag image tag aside tag audio tag canvas tag data list details embed navigation bar navigation sorry nav tag output progress bar progress ta tag uh, video tag order list uh, sorry unordered list order list list item and many more so it's uh, let's see how this tag uh, how to use these tags first of all we want to uh, each tag have its own name and its own behavior so and they have they must have to be enclosed inside this less than symbol and greater than symbol to be an uh, html tag for example uh, here is a title and uh, this is how you can write an html tag uh, but we have to enclose you will see how to write html tags in uh, in few minutes let's say uh, let's see is it case sensitive or not so no it is not a case sensitive you can write uh, how you will how you would love to write it uh, just uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, check the spelling is correct so you can write any like in your own way as you wish and let's uh, this is all about html introduction let's start with html basics this is our youtube channel if you are enjoying uh, our lessons uh, you can like this video you are watching you can just subscribe our youtube channel to uh, in our next session our friend mike day from giraffe academy is going to teach you how to use html and how to write html uh, how to create a website using html so let's ahead and subscribe the, his channel i will pro i will be providing their his channel link you can always subscribe to him also let's uh, enjoy your learning thanks again Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this course, I'm gonna cover everything you need to know to get started writing HTML. 
HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. And it's basically just a language that we can use to create web pages. So if you've ever been on the internet, almost every single page on the internet was written in this language called HTML. And in HTML, you can define a series of HTML tags, which will define the layout and the look and the feel of your website. So if you can learn what those HTML tags are, and if you can learn where to put them and how to use them together, then you can build your own website. It's actually a lot easier than people think to build a custom website. I mean, so often people will run off to use like content management systems or they use programs to build websites for them. But sometimes it's fun to just go in and get your hands dirty and start building a website from scratch. And you're going to learn how to do that in this course. In this course, I'm going to cover the basics of using HTML. So from the first lesson onto the last lesson, you're going to be writing HTML, you're going to be learning new tags, and you're going to be learning new ways to manipulate a web page to make it look and feel the way that you want it to. HTML is an invaluable skill. I mean, even just putting HTML experience on your resume could help you get a job one day, or it could just be something cool that you could brag to your friends about. As awesome as it is, I think sometimes people can be a little bit intimidated to try and learn HTML because it seems like there's so much to learn and it seems so complicated. I'm here to tell you that it's actually really easy to learn. And I'm going to be here with you throughout the entire course, walking you through all of the basics. Trust me, I've known HTML for a while, so I know what's worth learning and what's not. We're going to cover everything that you need. We're going to talk about all the important things. And by the end of this course, you're going to have a true and full understanding of what HTML is, how to use it and how to build your own website. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about choosing a text editor for HTML. Now, whenever you're writing HTML, you're actually writing it inside of what's called an HTML file. So this is a file just a lot like a text file, but instead of a .txt or a .docx extension, we have a .html extension. So with HTML, you're basically just writing these HTML files and then your web browser is able to take those files and display them as web pages. And it's sort of this really cool thing. But the first step in writing HTML is picking some program that you can use to write these HTML files in. There's a bunch of different options when you're trying to choose an HTML text editor. And I think a lot of times it can get a little bit confusing or maybe even a little bit overwhelming just because there's so many options and so many people have different opinions on which is the best editor and you know what's the best thing for beginners to do. In this video, I just want to give you an overview of like what are your options and then maybe give you some recommendations as far as like where to start. So with HTML text editors, really all you need is just a simple text editor. So any text editor that you have, which is capable of editing files and saving them in different formats is going to work for you. And generally when you're writing HTML, you don't want to use like a word processing program. There's a lot of word processors out there, uh, you know, Microsoft Word, Google Docs, LibreOffice. These are like these big word processing programs. And this is generally not something that you want to use. So you don't want to be typing out your HTML inside of a you know Microsoft Word. That's um, kind of an overkill. When you're writing HTML, the simpler, the better. So a lot of times for beginners, people will recommend that you use the just very simple text editor that you have on your computer. On Windows, it's going to be Notepad. On Mac, it's like text edit. And these are just the bare bones, simple text editors. And it's actually more than enough that you need to write HTML. And so, like I said, generally for beginners, writing HTML in something simple like Notepad or TextEdit really forces you to focus on writing the HTML. And, and you have to type out every single line and you have to really look to make sure that everything's formatted correctly. And it, ultimately, it'll just help you to really grasp the fundamentals. But if you're somebody who doesn't want to use like Notepad or TextEdit, you can actually use a specially designed program. And there's a bunch of these programs out there which are specially designed to write HTML in. And some of the popular programs, uh, there's one called Atom, Sublime, Brackets, uh, Text Wrangler, WebStorm. There's a bunch of these different programs that have been developed by different companies. And you can go online and do a bunch of research, but Essentially what these are are programs that are specially designed to help you write your HTML. So they'll take the HTML and they might display it differently. They might give you the ability to use like add-ons or different features that will make writing HTML a little bit easier. But as a penalty for that, they're also a little bit more complicated to use. And so 
like I said, generally for beginners, like the less complicated things are, the better. So you may want to err more on the side of doing something simple. And then once you learn HTML, move up to one of these other programs. I want to show you sort of the difference in what uh, these might look like. So over here I have text edit and this is just the default like text editor on Macs. So if I open this, you'll see here I have this file and this is actually an HTML file. So inside of this file, I have written a bunch of HTML and this is like the simplest HTML document you're ever gonna see. But this is what writing HTML would look like in something like this. And so if I wanted to add some more HTML down here, I could just type it out and you know, it, it's very simple. There's nothing to configure, there's nothing to add on, you just sort of write out your HTML. But something more complicated would be a program like this. This is called Atom, and this is one of those text editors I was talking about. And this makes it a, you know, a little bit easier for you to write the HTML. You can see it's formatted a little bit differently, right? So this is the same code, by the way. So over here, these little tags are colored. This is colored up here. So there's different colors. Generally, programs like this will allow you to choose different themes. So I could you know, make the whole look and the feel of this different. So there's a lot of really cool options and configuration options that you can use with a text editor like this. But what you also need to understand is writing HTML in this is doing exactly the same thing as this doing. Functionally, these are the same thing. They're just, you know, it's an environment for us to write HTML in. So here's my recommendation to you. I would definitely recommend, and a lot of people recommend this, starting with a simple text editor like this. It doesn't have to be um, text edit, but it can be something simple. And the whole idea is that the simpler, the better. When you're first learning HTML, you don't wanna have to worry about, you know, configuring different things or working with some heavy text editor. You know, using something light and simple like text edit is just gonna allow you to focus on the HTML. And then once you have a grasp for writing HTML and you really feel comfortable doing it, then you can move up to a program like this. Now, obviously that's just my recommendation. You don't have to listen to me. Uh, and if you do wanna choose a program like this, um, definitely do your research, try out a couple different programs, see which one fits for you. You're gonna hear a lot of people online saying like this text editor is the best or that one's the best. You know, people always get into little fights about those things, but the best text editor is the one that is right for you. And so it's the one that you enjoy using the most. Don't listen so much to what other people are saying. The best way to pick is just to try a bunch of these different text editors. And as you go through this course, even you can try a bunch of different ones and see how you like using each one. But again, for beginners, I would recommend starting simple. HTML is a really simple language. And so the less you can bog it down with like all these plugins and add-ons and themes, like the better it is. Because with web development and just programming in general, it's usually the simpler and the more straightforward something is, the better it is. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about creating your first HTML file. So I'm gonna show you how to create an HTML file. And I'll show you how you can view that HTML file on your web browser, and I'll show you how to set up your HTML file with some default HTML code in order to make it work properly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a folder for my project. So I'm gonna create a folder that I can put my HTML files in for my website. Over here in my File Explorer, I'm just gonna make a new folder and I'm just gonna call this GA underscore site for Draft Academy site. And then now what we can do is open up this folder inside of my text editor. So I'm gonna come over here and I'll just add this project folder. And now inside of this folder, I'm gonna create a new file. So I'm gonna say new file and I'm just gonna call this index.html. Now, the reason I'm naming this file index.html is because generally when you're creating your first web page, you want to name it index.html. index.html is a special file name that we can use and if a file is named index.html and it's at the root directory of your folder, then your web browser will think that that's the home page of your website. So, if you're just creating one web page like this, it's a good idea for us to name it index.html. But really you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name mine index.html. And so now we have our HTML file open. So this is actually a file now that we can use and view on our web browser. So if I just came over here and typed hello world, 
I can actually take this file and I'm just gonna open it up inside of my web browser. So I'm gonna click open, open with, and then I'll open it with my web browser. So I'm gonna open it with Google Chrome. And now what'll happen is you'll see this file will open up and over here on the web browser, we have our text. And so this is like the simplest, purest form of HTML, which is just typing out some bare bones text inside of an HTML file and it'll display here on our screen. But if we want to have an HTML file that's like an official file and that's structured correctly, we're actually going to have to add in some extra code in here. So I'm going to get rid of this and we're going to create what's called an HTML tag. Now HTML is a language that's used to define layouts for web pages and we can define those layouts using things called tags. So I can create a series of tags and those tags will basically tell my web browser how I want my website to look and what content I want to have on my website. So in order to kind of start creating our HTML file, we're going to have to create a basic skeleton of HTML tags. And these are just standard tags that every HTML file is going to have. And they're basically going to give our browser different information about what's in our file. So up here, the first tag that I want to create is going to be called doc type. And we're basically going to define what the document type of this file is going to be. And we're going to create an HTML file. So I'm going to type an exclamation point, D O C T Y P E all caps, just like that. And then I want to say HTML. So this tag is basically telling my web browser, the type of this document is HTML. So this is an HTML document. And now down here, I can start creating what are called container tags. So this is a single tag. We only need one of these tags, but in HTML, there's a lot of tags, which are called container tags. And it basically means that there's two tags. So there's a starting tag and there's an ending tag, and you can put other tags inside of them. So they act as containers for either content or other HTML tags. And the first one we're going to create is just called the HTML tag. So I'm going to make a less than sign HTML and a greater than sign. And now I can close off this tag. So this is the starting tag and I want to create an ending tag. So I'm going to create that down here. And the way that you create an ending tag is you take the name of the starting tag and you basically just put a forward slash before it. And then you type out the name of the starting tag. So this is now a pair of tags and you can see the relationship, right? So up here we have the starting tag. So HTML is the name of this tag. You could say that this is an HTML tag and this is the ending tag. So it uses that same name, but it uses this forward slash. So that forward slash is used to denote that this is the ending tag. And this HTML tag is going to be necessary for any HTML files that you have. This is basically like the highest level tag in our website. It's like the overall container tag for our website. And so all of the HTML code and HTML tags are going to go inside of here. So now there's two other sets of tags that I need to create. The first set is called the head tags and the second is called the body tags. So in any HTML file, there's two basic sections. There's the head of the document and then there's the body of the document and the head of the document defines data about the document. So we can define things like the title of the document. We can give the document a description. Um, we could define other attributes about the document, like maybe an image that's associated to the document. We can also use the head to import any resources that we need into our HTML file. So you'll find out later that we can actually link this HTML file to other types of files and inside of the head, we can do all of that. So the head is sort of like the settings of the HTML file. It's like the command center. It's sort of like metadata about the actual file. And we can create the head by creating head tags. So it's going to be a less than sign we're going to type head. And now we can close off this tag just like that. And now I'm going to create a body tag. So the body tag is where we're going to put like the meat and the bones of the HTML page. So the body tag is where all of our HTML content's going to go. Generally, the body is going to be a lot bigger than the head. Uh, the body is going to be where you're actually putting all the content for your web page. So anything that's in the body for the most part is going to show up or at least it's going to get rendered by the browser. Now down here, I'm just going to make these body tags. So I'm going to say body and we'll make another closing tag. 
body. And so I'm defining all of these different tags and when I open this file up inside of my web browser, the web browser is able to look through all of these tags and figure out information about the page. So the web browser can actually like parse through all of these different tags and it can figure out how to display all of the information. So you can define information and you can use tags to help define that information and lay out that information differently. And the web browser will be able to parse through all of that and basically decipher it and use it to build a website. So it's really cool. Now, one thing I want to point out is the way that I'm formatting everything. So you'll notice here that I have these HTML tags and inside of these HTML tags, I have this head tag and I have this body tag. So I want to point out the relationship between all of these tags. And I'm also going to introduce you guys to some terminology. The first thing you want to notice is that I'm indenting the head tag and I'm indenting the body tag. So you can see there's like a couple spaces here. This is basically just a tab. And generally when you're writing HTML, you want to indent all of your files. And so the rules for indenting are basically like we have this container, right? So I have this HTML tag and this HTML tag. And inside of here, we have the head and the body. So any tags that are inside other tags, you want to indent. And so it's just like this, right? This head tag is inside of this HTML tag. So I'm indenting it. Same thing with the body. I'm indenting it. And that will basically visually help you to decipher the relationships between the tags. And we can actually define the relationships with these tags. And one of the most common ways to do that is with like uh, family terminology. So we would refer to this HTML tag up here as the parent of this head tag and this body tag. So the body tag is the child of the HTML tag because it's inside of it. So if you're ever talking to like HTML developers, a lot of times they'll use that terminology. They'll say like, oh, the head tag is the child of the HTML tag. So I could ask you like, what's the parent of this body tag? And the answer would be the HTML tag because the body tag is inside of the HTML tag. We would also define the head tag and the body tag as siblings. So these would be sibling tags because they share the same parent. And so you can kind of understand that relationship. So if I was to create a series of tags inside of here, um, another tag we can make is like a paragraph. Actually, you wouldn't want to put it in the head. We want to put it in the body. So I could create a paragraph tag and don't worry too much about what paragraph tags are. We're going to get into that. But this paragraph tag would be the grandchild of this HTML tag and it would be the child of this body tag. So that's kind of like some terminology that you're going to hear a lot. You know, generally we're defining these HTML tags in terms of like generational syntax. So parent, child, grandparent, you get the point. So now that we have this basic HTML skeleton laid out, we essentially have everything that we need for this website. And so I can refresh or I can save this page and I'm actually going to head over here into my browser. And now when we refresh this page, you'll see that nothing happens. So this is a completely blank HTML document. It's like the simplest HTML document that we could ever write. So I'm going to show you one more tag that you can use. And this is called the title tag. So up here in the head of the document, I'm going to create another tag called title. And this tag, we're going to put some information in here. So generally when you have HTML tags, certain tags are meant as containers. So for example, this HTML set of tags is a container. It's basically used to hold other tags, but certain tags are used to hold content. So this title tag is used to hold text. And so inside of these title tags, we want to put text and this is going to be the title of my website. So I could say like Mike's website, and this is going to now be the official title of our website. And you'll notice that if I come over here to my web browser, look up here at this tab, you can see the title up here is currently index.html. That's the name of the file. But when I refresh this file, you'll see that it updates to Mike's website. And so this is a good example of the browser is able to parse through our website and it's able to read these title tags and figure out what the title of our website is. So these are the kind of tags that you can put inside of your head or like title tags, you know, tags that are defining information about the HTML document. And so down here in the body tag, I could put any content that I want to have inside of my web page. So I could put like, hello world down here. And now when I refresh the page, 
it'll show up in my web browser. So that's how you wanna go writing out content on your website. Any of the content is gonna go inside of these body tags. And throughout the rest of this course, we're gonna get into all the cool tags that you can put inside this body tag. Seriously, there's so many of these awesome tags in HTML, and there's so many tags that can help us to do awesome things inside of our web browser. So I hope you stick around and we'll learn how to put stuff inside the body. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about using some basic HTML tags. So we're gonna look at some of the most common HTML tags that you're gonna be using in your website and we'll use them to define a pretty good looking site. So by the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of how to lay out a bunch of content inside of HTML and display it on your browser. The first tag that I wanna show you is a tag that actually is gonna go up here in the head of our document. And I'm gonna put it right here above the title. And right now I just have a basic skeleton of an HTML file. It's sort of like the simplest version of an HTML file. And one thing that I wanna do is define something called a meta tag. And a meta tag is basically a tag that defines information about our file. So it's giving us metadata. So I can use this less than sign and I'm gonna define this meta tag. And I'm basically just gonna use this to define the character encoding for my web page. So this is basically just telling the web browser what types of characters I'm using inside of this document. So I can say char set is equal to, and then inside of these quotation marks, I'm just gonna say utf hyphen eight. And this will define the character set for my document as utf eight, which is like a really common character set. And it's the character set that I'm using. So like I said, this is a meta tag and it's used to define information about our file. I'm gonna define one more meta tag and this is gonna be a meta description tag. And so we can use this tag to basically give a description for our website. And this tag can be used by things like web browsers. So for example, Google could go into our file, look at this meta tag, and it can use it to display information on its search pages. So generally when you search for something on Google, a lot of times there'll be like a little description of it and they're using this tag from the file. So I can say, meta and I'm going to say name is equal to description and now I'm going to say content is equal to and now I can type the description for my website so I could say like this is an awesome website and now we have this description which is just like this is an awesome website and I'm going to go ahead and end this tag so I wanna show you guys uh, one concept or you know one thing in HTML, which is uh, HTML attributes. Now we have these HTML tags. So this is a meta tag right here. This is a meta tag. But inside of these tags, we have things called attributes. Sometimes people call them attributes. Sometimes people call them properties. Basically, we're passing this tag some information. So I have my meta tag and I'm giving this tag some custom information. So inside of this meta tag, I'm telling it what type of information I want to define. So I'm telling it that I want to define a description and I'm telling it what that description should be. So a lot of times in these HTML tags, you can pass them attributes or properties and those tags will be able to use those attributes and properties to do their job. So this meta tags job is to define metadata about the file. And when we pass it these attributes or properties, we're giving it the information that it needs to define that metadata. So a lot of times inside of our HTML tags, we're gonna have different attributes and we're gonna have to give those tags different information. So just keep that in mind. And these meta tags kind of do a good job of showing that because they take you know, like this one takes two attributes. So those are two tags that we can define up here in the head of our document. Now let's move down into the body of our document and we'll start having some fun. So the body of the document is where we can put all of like the actual content for our website. So all the stuff that you see on the website is generally gonna go here inside the body. Now, the first tag I wanna show you guys is basically a tag that we can use to define a header or like a title on our website. So over here I have this hello world, but I'm just gonna get rid of that because I don't really like it. Imagine that I wanted to give my website a heading, right? So I wanted to define like the heading for my website. 
Well, over here I can use something called a heading tag. And the way that we write this heading tag is with less than sign. And I'm gonna use this H and then after H, I'm gonna give this a number. So I can give this a number either one through six. So I can give it a two, three, four, five, or a six. And this will basically spit out a header for our website. So header one, let's just say that this is gonna be Mike's website. And I'm gonna use this ending tag right here. So this is an example of a tag that's gonna take some text input inside of it. And now when I go over here and I refresh my page, you'll notice that Mike's website shows up and it's nice and big, right? So I have this nice big header on my website and it's, you know, the text is really big and it looks really good. And in addition to defining an H1, I could also make this an H2. And so now when I make this an H2, it's gonna be a little bit smaller. So you see that it shrunk a little bit and I can make this an H4 and it's gonna shrink even more. And I could go all the way down to an H6, which is the smallest size of header that HTML is gonna allow us to define. And that's gonna be a pretty small header. So anytime you wanna sort of like announce something or you wanna like title, maybe like a section of a document, you can use these headers and the headers will look a little bit bigger and bolder than just normal text would. So in addition to having a header, maybe we'll leave this as an H2. I can also define just regular textual information. So I can define like a paragraph on my website. And if you're writing like an article or a web page, a lot of times you're gonna wanna use a paragraph, right? You're, you're gonna wanna have some text on your website. So I can make what's called a paragraph tag. And a paragraph tag is just gonna be P, and then we're also gonna need an ending tag. And now any text that I write in here is gonna go inside of its own paragraph. So I could write like, this is my, paragraph. And now when I refresh my page, you'll see that this text showed up in its own paragraph. And what's cool about paragraphs is that they'll automatically sort of format themselves. So I could actually make another paragraph right below this. So we could say this is another paragraph. And this paragraph will automatically space itself out and it'll be below this other paragraph. Okay. So we have this paragraph and then we have this paragraph and they're kind of just like lined up like that. And you can put as much text as you want inside these paragraphs. And generally, whenever you're writing out like a block of text, you're gonna wanna use this paragraph tag. Now, we can also style some of the elements inside of this paragraph. So let's say that I wanted this word here, paragraph, to be bolded. Well, I can use another special HTML tag, which is the bold tag, and this will make this word bold. So I can do less than sign, and the bold tag is just a B, and then you wanna end it over here. So inside of these open and closed bold tags, we can put any of the text inside of a paragraph or inside of another place in our website that we want to be bold. So now when I refresh this page, you'll see that paragraph is bold. I can also use another tag. So instead of making it bold, we can make it italicized. So I could use an I right here instead of a B. And now instead of being bold, this text is gonna be italicized. And you can actually embed these tags inside one another. So I could use the bold tags and the italics tags. So over here, I'll take this bold tag and I'll take this other ending bold tag. And inside of the bold tags, I'm gonna put the italics tags and then I'm gonna put the paragraph. And now we'll have a bold italics paragraph, just like that. So it's just italicizing one of the words and bolding the word at the same time. So that's a really great way for you to, you know, you could italicize certain words or you can bold certain words and it really makes it easy just by using those tags. Another thing that we can do is we can control the layout of the document. So. One of the things with HTML is that it lays out our web pages in a very specific way. And I wanna kinda show you how that happens. So when HTML lays out our web page, it basically takes the layout that we define here inside the body and displays it over here on the web page. So the order that we have the elements here in the document is the order that they're gonna show up on the browser. So if I was to cut out this paragraph and paste it up here above the header, now my document's layout and structure will reflect that. So now the paragraph is gonna be above the website, uh, the website header, and then this other paragraph's gonna be below it. So the way that you order these tags inside of HTML is the way that they're gonna show up 
on the website. And the other thing is HTML doesn't necessarily care about the way that we format this file. So in other words, HTML doesn't care about the white space. In other words, if I made two extra lines here, you might think, okay, now there's gonna be two extra lines between the paragraph and the title, right? Because there's all this space inside of here, but that's actually not the case. When I refresh the page, nothing happens. HTML lays itself out and orders itself out using these tags. And so it doesn't care about any of this white space that's inside of our files. It really just cares about what's inside these tags. So imagine that we wanted to create some white space, right? And I'm just gonna put this header back up here so it's a little bit easier to read. I could actually create a new line. So let's say here inside of this, after this header two, I wanted to make a new line. I can use another HTML tag, which is called a break. And the break tag will basically create a new line in our HTML document. So I can just do a less than sign, a BR, and then we're gonna do a forward slash, and we're gonna do a greater than sign. And you'll see now, when I refresh this page, there should be a space between the title and between this first paragraph. So you can see that we have this space here. And you can use as many of these break tags as you want. I can make two of them and now it's gonna be even further down. So these break tags can be really good to kind of break things up. Another tag that I can use is called the horizontal rule tab. And the horizontal rule tab will basically give us a straight line right across the website that's gonna help us to separate some of our content. So I can make that tag, I can say HR, and then I'm gonna do a forward slash, and I'm gonna do a greater than sign. And so you'll notice that this HR tag was a lot like that BR tag that we used before. And this is another special type of HTML tag. So this is a tag that's called a single tag, right? So over here in this header two, we have one tag, and then we have this other ending tag. But sometimes there'll be tags, for example, like this horizontal rule tab, where you don't really need two tags, like there's nothing that needs to go inside of them. And so it's just gonna be a single tag. And a lot of times with these single tags, you'll format them this way. So you'll write out the name and then you'll use this ending sign and then you use this greater than sign. And actually in certain cases, you can actually just get rid of this forward slash, but we're gonna keep it in because it's like technically correct HTML. So now you'll see that instead of a break here, we're gonna have a horizontal line. And this horizontal line is basically just something we could use to break up our content, right? You could put, uh, you could even put like another one in here and it might style it, right? So you could have like a double line there, whatever. And the horizontal rule will go all the way across the page. There's also a couple other tags that we can use to control the size of our text. So down here in this paragraph, let's say that we wanted to make uh, one of these words bigger. For example, let's say we wanted to make this bigger right here. We can use two tags called big and small and they'll actually make our text a little bit bigger or smaller. So I can do the big tag here and I'll do the ending tag. So this works just like all those other tags where anything that goes inside of this big tag is actually gonna get bigger. So now, watch this, this right here. When I refresh my page, it's actually gonna get a little bit, little bit bigger and you can see that it did. And so I could do the same thing with this is tag down here. Let's make this bigger as well, just to really illustrate this. And now when I refresh this page, the is tag is also gonna get bigger. So it doesn't get that much bigger, but you can use this to kind of control how the text looks like. Maybe you want some text to be a little bit bigger or smaller. I can do the same thing, but with small tags. So here on this my word, I'm gonna give this a small tag. So we'll say small, and then again, we're gonna end it. And now watch the my right here. This is gonna get smaller. So you can see that it shrunk a little bit. So using those big and those small tags can help us to control the size of the text on our website. We can also use other tags uh, called subscripts and superscripts. So this can be used to format like subscripts and superscripts, especially if you're doing something like math, you're gonna wanna use something like this. So I'm gonna go over here into this paragraph and we'll create a subscript and a superscript. So imagine that I wanted to like type out the chemical formula for water, right? We could say H2O but this two should actually be a subscript, right? It should be like a small little two right down uh, below H. So I can use this sub tag and I can surround this two with the sub tag. And now this is gonna be like 
a little bit smaller. So you'll see here we have H2O, so it's formatted correctly. I could also do the same thing with a superscript. So uh, another good example would be like math. So I could say like, maybe we wanted to write out 10 squared. So like 10 to the power of two. I can use this superscript tag and this will make this a superscript. So now we have 10 squared. So these are all like little HTML tags that you can basically just use to format the text on your website. And when HTML was first written, you have to understand that websites were just all textual. So nowadays we have like a bunch of images and videos and all these different things on our web pages, but you know, generally HTML was just used to write out text. And there were some images and some other stuff, but there's a lot of HTML tags that just deal with formatting your text. So these are all tags that can come in handy and you can definitely use them to format text inside of your paragraphs, or you can use any of these tags inside of other elements. So I don't want you to think you can, that you can only use these tags inside of like a paragraph. You can use these tags anywhere that there's text on your website. So we could use these up here in the header or you could use them in any other HTML tag that you want. So those are just some basic tags. Obviously there's a bunch of these tags that we can learn and we're gonna get into more of them. But what you wanna do is really get a handle for the basics. And so this is really like the basics of HTML, things like headers, horizontal rules, breaks, paragraphs get a handle for the basics and practice like fleshing out different websites using only these things. And then when you move on to more complex HTML, you'll be better off for it because you know the fundamentals. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about comments in HTML. Now comments are basically little pieces of text that you can write inside of your HTML, which will be ignored by the browser. And generally the purpose of comments is for either yourself to read or for other developers to read. So you can write an HTML comment inside of your HTML code and it'll be completely ignored by the web browser. But if, for example, you come back to your code later, you might leave yourself a little reminder or you could explain what a little block of code is doing or if you give your file to another developer, you can use comments to give them little notes. Now I'm gonna show you how you can use comments inside of HTML, and then we're also gonna talk about comments best practice. So like, how can you use comments the best way in HTML? The way that you can create a comment is by using a very particular syntax. And so I can create a comment by using a less than sign, an exclamation point, and then two hyphens. And so now you can see here in my text editor that the, when I put this second hyphen in here, like the look of the comment actually changed. And that's because now we're in a comment. And so any text that I type is gonna be grayed out. So this text looks different from the text out here. And basically that's just to indicate that, okay, we have now an HTML comment. One of the things I wanna point out is that when I created this comment, all of the code below it turned also into this little comment. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating an opening tag for a comment. So a comment is gonna go inside of these opening and closing tags. And I can close off this comment tag by using a hyphen hyphen and a greater than sign. So now anything inside of these tags is gonna be a comment. And I can run these comments down across multiple lines. So I can create comments you know, that span a couple different lines in our text. And like I said, comments are basically just special pieces of text that aren't gonna get rendered by the browser. So uh, generally the browser's not just gonna, not gonna look at them, they're just gonna kind of ignore them. And in here you can just put little notes. So I could say like, to do, like I need to work on this, uh, or I could say, um, you know, don't display this. You know, really any comment that you wanna put, I mean, it really doesn't matter. But comments can definitely be useful and you're gonna to wanna to know how to use comments. Uh, you can also use comments to comment out specific pieces of code. So uh, let's say for example that I didn't want this H2 and this horizontal rule to show up. So that's like this header over here on my website. I could take this and surround it with comments. And now this basically just won't show up on my website. And you can see because the browser's ignoring it. So a lot of times people who write HTML uh, in addition to using comments to like write little notes, they'll also just use comments to kind of comment out 
little pieces of code. So it's kind of useful, right? Because none of this code is gonna get rendered by the browser now. So if I wanted to maybe try a different piece of code or you know try something else, I can comment this code out and it's still gonna be there inside of the HTML file, but it's not gonna get used by the browser. And a lot, another thing a lot of people will do is they'll put like the reason why they commented out. So you could just say like uh, redoing this or something. And then, you know, that would mean like you're rewriting whatever's in here and you just wanna have a backup inside the comment. So that's the basics of comments. They're really simple, but they're also really powerful. Now, one word of, I guess, kind of warning, and this is sort of like me just talking like with my personal opinion, I think, when you're using comments, you need to use them sparingly. Um, I think some people have a bad habit of just writing out like all of these, you know, really long comments, explaining things and doing things. You know, personally, I think the, the purpose of a comment is, is to explain something that can't be explained with code. So just, sometimes people will write like a bunch of messy code. So they'll write a, a bunch of messy HTML and then they'll just write a comment above it being like, oh, it does this, like, oh, this is the header. Meanwhile, the code is like, you know, a complete disaster, it's really messy. I'm a big believer in letting the HTML speak for itself. And I think it's a, a decent philosophy to adopt. You know, when you let the HTML speak for itself, you make sure that you write clean and readable HTML. And that way, when somebody goes to view your HTML document, they don't even need any comments to explain anything because it's all clear. You know, what you don't want to be is the guy who writes a bunch of messy code, writes a comment telling what it does, because it doesn't help anyone out, right? Sure, the comment's telling me what this line of code is doing, but it doesn't help me if I need to go in there or modify it. So before you use a comment, try to explain what you're doing using your HTML. Comments are used for things that can't be explained with the HTML. And they can also be used, like I said, to comment out lines of code and you know put things on hold for a second, hide them from the browser. You know, really, this is all just kind of my opinion and me kind of riffing about comments, but use comments however you want and be sure to add them into your HTML files to increase your productivity. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about styles and colors. Now, one of the cool things you can do in HTML is you can actually style the individual elements. And when you style HTML elements, you can use something called a style attribute, and you can actually give each of these HTML elements certain styling information. Now, when we're talking about styling HTML, there's an entire other subject that you can get into, which is called CSS. And that stands for a cascading style sheet. So in this lesson, I just wanna kind of give you an introduction into how you can use basic CSS to style some of these HTML elements. Now, this isn't a meant to be a full course on CSS. And in fact, this Draft Academy course is really only meant to be used for HTML. We have another course that talks solely about CSS. But just know for now, I wanna introduce you to the topic of styling some of your HTML. You can see over here, I have this uh, header up here and then I have this paragraph here in my file. And I can actually give these uh, two color attributes. I can color the text and I can actually give them a background color as well. So in this lesson, I'm gonna show you how you can start adding some basic colors onto the elements for your HTML. But again, keep in mind that this isn't meant to be like a full course on CSS. This isn't meant to be a full course on styling. I just wanna give you guys an introduction. So in here in this paragraph, I can pass this paragraph an attribute. So in HTML, in addition to just defining the tag, you can also give the HTML tag certain information. These are called like attributes or properties or some people call them parameters. I'm gonna give this something called style. So I type out style is equal to, and now inside of these quotation marks, I can type out some different style attributes that I wanna to give to this element. One of them is color, and color is gonna control the color of the text for this paragraph. I can do a colon, and now I can basically just type out uh, any color that I want. So let's use blue, because that's one of my favorite colors. So now when I refresh this page, you'll notice that this paragraph over here has turned blue. And so instead of just being that boring black color, now it's blue. We could also change it to red. And now it will be red. So you can use a bunch of these different colors and you can change the color of the text. 
I could also change something called background color. So in addition to changing the color to red, let's change the background color to maybe blue. So now I can type out background hyphen color and I can pass in another color. So let's make this blue. And so now this paragraph will have its text colored as red and it'll have its background colored as blue, just like that. And so you can use these different color combinations to control the background of the text and the color of the text. And you can also use these attributes in other elements. So for example, I could use this same thing inside of this header right here. I could say style. And remember, this is just a, an attribute that we're passing in. I could say color, and now we'll make this green. So I can make this thing green. And I can also use these stylings on these container tags. So up here we have this body tag. I could give this a style as well. So I can say style. And why don't we give this a background color? So I'm gonna give this a background color of light blue. So I'll say background color, light blue. And now what you'll see is the entire body. So the entire body of our HTML, so all of this stuff, is gonna turn blue. And that's exactly what happened. So you can use this background color inside of this body tag to control the background of the website. And what you'll notice is, even though we made the background of the body light blue, since we made the background of this paragraph blue as well, it's overriding the styling that we got from the body. So that's how you can use this style attribute in order to give your HTML elements some basic style. And if you wanna learn more about styling your elements, Draft Academy has a full course talking about CSS where we get into all of this stuff, styling your HTML, doing all of that. But for now, if you're just trying to learn HTML, and I would definitely recommend learning HTML first, just know that you can use these basic coloring styles to change the look and the feel of your website. Now, I wanna show you a website where you can go to to find all of the colors that you can use. So this is a website called W3Schools, and you can just kind of Google search like W3Schools color list, and it'll give you a list of all these CSS colors. And so again, don't worry too much about CSS, just know that you can use these inside of those style tags. So this is just a full list of like the name of the color, and if you don't wanna pass in the name, so like, I could say like aqua inside one of those style tags and it would color the text or the background aqua. You can also just put these uh, hex tags in there. So you could copy this guy and put it in place of the color name and it's still gonna work. So that's just some basics on using color and styling in HTML. Again, if you're just trying to learn HTML, don't worry too much about styling, but I just wanted to show you guys like the basics of styling an element, just so you can kind of like get your teeth wet and start working with styling inside of your HTML. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about using various HTML tags to lay out the structure of your website. Now, we've looked at some of these basic HTML tags, things like body and this HTML tag. We also looked at things like the headers and paragraphs, all these very basic HTML tags. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about tags that we can use to format the content on our page. So these tags are gonna help us to lay out the different content on our website into different sections. And really when we're writing HTML, you wanna make sure that you're using the right tags to lay out your page. One of the most common mistakes that new developers to HTML make is that they don't use the correct tags and they don't use all of the HTML tags that they have available to them to lay out their pages. A lot of times people won't use the right tags or they won't lay out their pages as well as they could because maybe they don't know about certain HTML tags or they just don't feel like taking the time to use them. But in this tutorial, I wanna show you all the tags that you should be using to lay out your web pages. So the first thing I wanna show you is how you can start laying out some of the code inside of your body. Now, most web pages are gonna have three distinct sections. Normally there's a header and the header is like up at the top. And generally the header is an element that's on every page of your website. So this could be like a navigation menu. Maybe it has some branding information. So it has like the name of the website and maybe a logo and you'd have links to like other parts of your websites. I mean, you guys have seen a website before. You kind of know what a header of a website is supposed to look like. 
The next section is the main section. So this is like the meat and the bones of the website, right? This is where all of the content is gonna go. So maybe you ha would have like an article or you might have different sections of an article, some images, whatever. It's like the main section of the website. And the third section is the footer. And most websites are gonna have a footer, right? If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's some additional navigational links. Again, maybe some branding information, um, maybe links to like some social media pages. Most websites though are gonna implement that basic three section structure, the header, the main, and the footer. And HTML has tags that we can use to define all of those sections. So here inside my body, I'm gonna start by defining the header and I can just make a header tag just like this and we'll make two of them. And so now any of the code that we'd wanna put in the header of our website is gonna go up in here. And now over here, I'm gonna make a main. And so we have these other tags main and what you wanna do is put all of the main content of your website inside of here. And finally, we can have the last one, which is the footer tag. So footer, and again, I'm just gonna close this off, footer. So we have this basic three tag layout. We have the header, we have the main, and we have the footer. And these are all sibling elements. So they're all, they all have the same parent element, which is this body tag. And a good practice whenever you're using HTML is to separate the code for these specific areas. So you wanna put all the code for the header of your website inside the header tags, for the main inside the main tags, and the footer inside the footer tags. Inside of these different tags, we can also define certain things. So imagine that inside of my header tag, I had a navigation menu, right? A lot of times in a header of a website, there'll be navigation links. So it'll be like, here's the home page, then the about page, the contact us page, whatever. We would wanna put any of those navigational elements inside of something called a nav tag. And this nav tag is used to store navigational elements. So if you had like, you know, a list of different links inside your website, then you could put them here inside of these nav tags. Now, obviously the point of this video isn't to show you like how to build a navigation tag or a navigation list. I just wanna show you what you would need to use for a structure. So I'm showing you like how to structure this information. So any navigational items, like maybe navigational lists or navigational links are gonna go inside of nav tags. And that's a special tag inside of HTML. There's also some other tags that we could use inside of this main. So imagine that I had like a blog website and on my blog website, I had a bunch of blog posts. Well, one thing I could do would be to use what's called an article tag. So I can make an article tag and then inside of those article tags, I could write my blog post. So I could make a tag called article and down here, we're just gonna close this. And so inside of these article tags, you could put all the text for your article and then the browser would know like, okay, there's gonna be an article inside of here. We can also use another tag, which is called a section. So generally, if you're writing a blog, you might have like different sections on your website. And so we can use this section tag to break up our article or really any part of your website into different sections. So once again, the section tags don't have to be used with the article tag, but they just happen to go together really well. And that's on purpose. So I could say section and we can close this off. And then any of the code for like the first section of your blog post could go in here. And maybe I'll have another section. And again, we can just close this off. So you can make as many of these section containers as you want and you can put all of the content for the section of your website. And usually whenever you have a different section, you'd want to include a header for the section. So you can include um, like an H1 or an H2 or an H3, whatever header that you'd want to have. Now, I also want to talk to you guys about using headers inside of your HTML documents. And this isn't something that is required to do, but Generally, if you're laying out an HTML page or an HTML article, you wanna be careful with how you're using your headers. So generally on a web page, you wanna have one header one, and that header one will be like the main title for the website. And then below that header one, you would have header twos, which would define the different sections of your website. So you might have this top header one, and then you'd have header twos, and then you'd have another header two down here. And then if you wanted another header inside one of those sections, you would use a header three. So 
a lot of times people will recommend using headers in like a hierarchy fashion. So you'd want to have like a header one and then header two, header two, and then inside of here, like another header three. So you'd want to define the headers of your website in this kind of like hierarchy fashion. And that's not required. Like it's not going to change the performance of your website if you don't do that. But that's sort of like a best practice that a lot of people, a lot of developers are going to use when they're designing their websites. And since we're talking about laying out like the structure of the website, I think that's good information to take the heart. Another tag that we can use to help lay out our websites is called an aside tag. And then a side tag is basically a tag that you can use for any content that's not directly related to like the main content on the page. And a good example of a scenario where you'd want to use an aside tag might be like an advertisement. So a lot of websites will have advertisements like you might be using Google AdSense or, you know, whatever, like if you have an advertisement on your website, you could use an aside tag to define that. And the aside tag, basically would just mean like this content is on the page and it's getting shown to the users, but it's not directly related to like the core content of our website. So those are just a bunch of different tags that you can use to help lay out your website. And I would definitely consider using the tags when you're building the basic structure of your website. One thing that a lot of people end up doing is they'll just sort of use like general container tags to lay out their website. So they won't use the specific HTML tags that HTML has defined for them to lay out their website. And one of the advantages of using these tags of, you know, specifying like this is a section of my website and this is another section of my website because you might say like why do i have to define all of those sections and honestly like using tags like this isn't necessarily going to change the look and the feel of your website like you could create a header a main and a footer for your website without using the header the main or the footer tags the purpose of those tags is one to act for organization so if you're writing an html file one of your goals should be to make the file as readable as possible so when you write the file you want it to be able to be read by uh, either yourself later on or other developers and when you use these html tags these structure tags it makes it a lot easier to tell what's going on right so i can look at your html and i can tell like oh, okay here's the header oh here's the main so this is where like all of the core content is okay here's the article and i need to go to the second section here's the second section it just makes it easier to read the file and it just makes the organization more organized and again these tags these structural tags aren't necessarily going to change the look or the feel of the website but they're extremely useful another reason they're useful is for search engine optimization and search engine optimization is basically just how your website is viewed by search engines. So a lot of, well, there's actually more to it than that, but that's sort of like the basic idea is like if your site has good search engine optimization, then it'll be really easy for search engines like Google to be able to go read through your site and figure out what it's about. And when you use these very specific HTML tags, it makes it a lot easier for something like Google to go into your website and figure out the structure of your website and figure out where all of the content of your website is. When you use these HTML tags, something like Google could easily go into your file and figure out like where the article is and it can figure out the different sections of your website and it can figure out like how your website is laid out and then it can use that information to display your website better. A lot of people underestimate the power of these HTML tags and so I want to kind of instill in you guys who are watching this video the power that these tags can have. You definitely want to use things like this to lay out your websites. Don't listen to people who tell you that they're not important because they definitely are important. That's the reason that they're included in HTML. HTML is a no-nonsense language. There's not a whole lot of fluff in there so when HTML defines something, you know that it's important. Anyway, I would always recommend laying out your files, something like this, using these different tags. If you don't want to, you don't want to, but I think it takes a little extra time, but it can really increase the readability and also the parsability of your file by like search engines. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using links in HTML. A link is one of the most popular HTML elements and it's used to link your website to other websites on the internet. So I could create a link that would bring my users to like google.com or facebook.com 
or I could link to other pages on my website. So if I wanted to build like a navigational list, I could have links to the other pages on my website that users could click and then they'd go to those pages. You can also link to files, things like images or PDFs, and you can create those links and then users can look at those images or PDFs. So I'm gonna show you how to create a link. We need to use a special HTML tag called A. And after A, we need to pass this tag some information. We need to give it something called an href. And the href is basically just where we want to link to. So the easiest way to create a link would be to create like an external link. So linking to a page that's not on our website. Imagine we wanted to create a link that would go to like google.com. Inside of this href, I can just type the address to google.com. So I can say https colon forward slash forward slash and you need to make sure that you include this like HTTP or HTTPS part. A lot of times when you will give someone a link, like you won't include this, it'll just be like www.whatever. But when you're creating an href and you're creating a link, you need to be very specific about where you want to go. So you're gonna to need to include this part and then I can just type www.google.com. So what we've effectively done is told this link attribute that we want it to link to this address, which is Google. And now I'll close this and I can actually close off this entire tag so we can just make this closing a tag. And now inside of here, I can put any text for this link. So we could say, for example, Google's homepage. Now I also just wanna point out that inside of these link tags, you can put more than just text. So you don't have to just put text, you could actually put other HTML elements. So I could put like a header one in here, for example. So why don't we do that? We'll make this a header one. And now when I refresh my page, you'll see that we have this big old link over here. It's this big header one. And when we click on it, it will link us to google.com. So I'm gonna click this and you'll see that we get transported over to Google's homepage, right? So we're over here on Google. So that's how you can create a link. And basically you can just go to any website that you want, come up here to the URL bar, copy the URL, including this like HTTP or HTTPS part, throw it into the href of your link and you'll be able to link there. Uh, there's one other thing that we can do though. One thing I want you to notice is when I click this link, it navigates me away from the website. So I click this and all of a sudden we're on Google. In certain cases though, you're not gonna want users to navigate away from your website when they click a link, right? In certain cases, you might want this to open up, for example, in a new tab. And the way that you can do that is by giving this A tag another attribute. So we can say, um, we wanna say target is equal to, and now inside of these quotation marks, we wanna say underscore blank, okay? So when you pass in this underscore blank value to this target attribute, this is gonna basically tell the browser to open up this link in a new tab. So now when we open up Google, it's gonna open up here in a new tab and we still have our website open. So that's one thing that you can do to make this better. And so again, inside of this link, I can put any HTML elements that I want. So I could put like an H1, maybe we wanted to like make this homepage bold, we could put a bold tag in here. And you can really like get creative and like style these different links different ways you want to. So don't be afraid to put HTML elements inside of these A tags, because it's definitely something that you're gonna want to do. Another thing that we can do is we can link to other pages on our website. So I'm gonna get rid of the text for that link. I'm also gonna get rid of this target blank. And if you look over here in my file explorer, like my little file tree, you can see that in addition to this index.html file, which is the file that we're using right now, I also have this page2.html and this page3.html. And these are both just like other web pages that are on my website. So any given website is gonna have a number of web pages. You might have like an about page, a contact me page. If it's a blog, you might have a bunch of like blog articles. You get the point. A lot of times you're gonna have more than one HTML file for your website. And we can actually link between those files. And you can use this link attribute to do that. So in here in this href, instead of linking to Google using this like absolute address, I can link to those pages on my website using a relative URL. So if I wanted to access this page two, for example, let's say that I wanted to link to page two, 
because the page that I'm currently on and page two are in the same directory, I can just type out page two's name. So down here, I can just say like page two.html. And the browser will automatically know that we want to go here to page two. So over here, I can just type page two. And now in the browser, you'll see that we have a link to page two. So when I click this, it'll bring me over here to page two. And you'll notice that inside of page two, I've already set up a link inside of here. So here in page two, I have another link, which is just linking me back to index.html. And this is the way that we can create navigation on our site. So now I'm over here in page two and I can navigate back to the home page. So I can navigate between these two pages on my website. I could also create another link to page three. So let's do that right here below this page two. We'll make another link this time to page three. And one thing you want to notice is that page three is inside of this directory. So page three is inside of a folder called dir one. If I want to link to page three, I can't just say page three dot HTML because the browser is not going to know where this page three is supposed to be. We have to tell it exactly where it is relative to the current file that we're on. So I can say dir one forward slash page three. And what this is going to say is, we want to go to directory one and we want to link to a page inside of directory one called page three dot HTML. So now we should have a link to page three and you can see that showed up right here. I can click this and it'll bring us to page three. So that's a way that you can link to different pages on your website. You can also create links to files on your website. So in our case, uh, we just have this little cat picture and this is just kind of like a cute cat. And we could actually link to this picture of the cat on our website. So I'm going to go over here into my index file and we can access this picture the same way that we've been accessing these HTML files. So I can just say instead of dir one, the cat picture is at the same directory. So I can just say cat and it's a JPEG file. So dot JPG and we can change this to cat. And now I should have a link to this cat picture. So when I click this, it'll bring me to this picture of the cat and I can look at the cat. So that's kind of how you can link to external websites, other pages on your website and files on your website. So in addition to a JPEG, I could also link to like a PDF or a word document. If I had it stored on my website, it doesn't matter. And that's sort of the basics of using links in HTML. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you about using images on your website. One of the most common things people want to do when they have a website is put images up there. And so today I'm going to show you the basics of working with images. We can talk about resizing images and basically just placing them on our HTML pages. So I'm going to create an image tag down here and an image tag is basically just less than sign IMG. And inside this image tag, we actually have to give it a couple pieces of information. The first thing we want to give this image tag is the location of the image that we want to show. So when you have this image tag, you have to basically link it to an actual image and then the HTML will be smart enough to go grab that image and then place it on our website. So I can just say source SRC is equal to, and then these quotation marks. And inside of these quotation marks, we want to put the location of the image. Now, one of the most basic ways to do this is to link to an image that's on the internet. So there's a lot of images on the internet, obviously, and we can actually just put the address for an image inside of this source tag and it'll link us to that image. So over here in my browser, I just have some pictures of dinosaurs and there's a bunch of dinosaurs here. Um, here's like a T-Rex, like really scary. So I can just view this image. And you can see up here that this image has like an address associated to it, right? So this image is like, you know, obviously it's like this crazy address, but I can copy the address to this image and then I can just paste it onto this source attribute. So I can just paste that bad boy right in here and we got this awesome image. And so when we want to use an image, uh, in addition to specifying the source, I can also specify one more attribute, which is called alt. 
And the alt attribute is basically what's gonna show up if the image can't be found. So one of the problems that sometimes you'll run into when you're making your HTML is that an image that you're linking to is like either deleted or it's not there or it can't be loaded by the browser. So for example, if this image of the scary dinosaur ever like disappeared, like if that person took it off of their website, then it wouldn't show up anymore. And so we have this alt tag as like a backup. So whatever text you put inside this alt tag will show up if the image doesn't show up. And also it's a good practice always to just have an alt tag. And you wanna make this like maybe one sentence that's like pretty descriptive. So I could just say like a really scary dino. And now this is like describing the image in sort of like plain text. So always wanna make sure you have an alt tag. And when we have an image, it's just gonna be a single tag. So a lot of times in HTML will have like two tags, like a starting tag and an ending tag, and we'll put some stuff inside of there. Not the case with an image. We can just do this forward slash, and we can do a greater than sign, and now the tag is gonna be done. So it's just a single image tag, just like this, and obviously it's a pretty long URL. Now what this should do is it should go out, grab this image, and display it on our website. And that's exactly what happened. So this dino is actually like pretty big. You can see um, super scary. But now we have this image on our website so we can link to this image. Another thing that we can do is link to images that are on our actual computer. So instead of linking to an image that's on the internet, I can just link to an image maybe that I have like, you know, for myself. So I'm gonna get rid of this source here. And I have this image on my little file tree over here. It's just this cute cat. And I can actually take this cat picture and insert it into my website, just like I did with that picture from the internet. So inside the source, I'm just gonna link to the image of the cat. So it's just gonna be cat.jpg. And now I'll change the alt. So we can just change it from like a really scary dinosaur to a really cute cat. And when I refresh my page, we'll have the cat picture. So one of the problems that you might be noticing with the dinosaur picture and now with this cat picture is that they're kind of big, right? Like this is kind of like a big image and especially that dinosaur picture, that was huge, took up like the entire screen. So one of the things you can do with images is resize them and we can give this image tag a couple more attributes. So in addition to defining the source, and defining the alt text, we can also define a width and a height. And the width and the height will control the size of the image. So I can give this a width, you know, I could say, actually it's gonna be equal to, and we can say maybe like 100, and we can give it a height, and this will be 100, right? So we'll kind of shrink it down a little bit. And these, like 100, what that means is 100 pixels. A pixel is a unit of measurement that we can use in HTML basically like defines sizes and a pixel is kind of hard to explain like how big it is because it's not a standard unit. In other words, a pixel could be a different size depending on the resolution of the screen that you're looking at. So a hundred pixels, you know, for the most part, it's going to be kind of the same distance on most web pages, but it's not like an absolute distance of measurement, like a centimeter or an inch. So just keep that in mind. So I can say 100 pixel width and 100 pixel height. And now when I refresh my page, the cat is a little bit smaller, right? So we can see it a little bit better. But we have another problem, which is that the cat looks horrible, right? I mean, it's kind of like smushed in a little bit. And you'll notice if I get rid of this width and the height that I'm actually changing the aspect ratio of the image. So now I refresh this, you see the image is actually like wider than it is tall. So when you're defining a different width and a height for an image, you wanna be sure to keep the same aspect ratio. What you can do is you can figure out what the aspect ratio of your image is. So over here in this cat.jpg, you can see down here that the aspect ratio for this image is 300 by 200. So it's like, 300 pixels by 200 pixels. So it has like a, so it has a 300 by 200, uh, you know, aspect ratio or whatever. And we can just keep that same aspect ratio inside of our width and our height. So I'm gonna put these back in. So if it's 300 by 200, we could make it um, 100 by 66, and this should give us the 
correct like aspect ratio, right? Because that's the same ratio as 300 to 200. So now when I resize the image, it looks great, right? It's just, it's a little bit smaller, but it's the same dimensions, like it's the same aspect ratio. So that's kind of how you can resize your images. And you can also use other things with images. So I could combine this image with a link, for example. So I could come over here and we could create a link tag and we can just say A and we'll give this an href. And inside here, I could put like whatever link that I wanted to. For So for example, I could link this to like this dinosaur picture, right? I could put the URL for the dinosaur in there and we can close off this link and now when I click on the image, it'll bring me to that picture of the dinosaur. So you can make these images like clickable. You can really do a lot of stuff with these images and you can embed them inside of other HTML tags. So I could put like an image inside of other HTML tags. You know, you can put them anywhere you want and images are super powerful and you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that you use them on your website. And you always wanna make sure that you include this alt attribute. This is really important. A lot of people get lazy and they don't put it in there, but it's really important. And for example, if I was to get rid of this cat.jpg here in the source, you'll see that now what it does is it just gives me that alt text. So it's really important just so your website kind of stays together um, in the case that an image link is broken. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about using videos on your website. So I'm gonna show you how you can take a video that you have saved on your computer and put it into your website and then I'm also gonna show you how you can include a YouTube video into your website. So let's start with a normal video. Over here, I have this tutorial.mp4 video. And this is just like one of the tutorials that I did for Draft Academy. And I wanna include this on my website. So I can actually use the HTML video tag. And it's just gonna be video just like this. And I'm gonna give this an attribute called source. So it's gonna be SRC is equal to and then inside of these quotation marks, I wanna type in the location of the video. So the relative path to the video from the current file. In my case, it's just tutorial.mp4. And then I can close off this video tag. And we're actually gonna need an ending video tag as well. Now, one thing you might wanna do is put some text inside of these video tags. And this is text that's gonna show up if the user's browser can't display like videos in a certain format. And this is kind of rare, like most browsers are gonna be able to display a video, but just know that any text that you put in here will get displayed if the video fails for any reason. So if I go over here to my website, I can refresh the page and you'll notice that the video is gonna show up and it shows up. But the problem is if I click on this video, I can't actually play it, right? So I keep clicking and the video is not playing and that's because we haven't given this video any video controls. So I can come down here and I can actually just give this another attribute called controls. And as long as we type controls in here, now this video will be able to have video controls. So sometimes you might just wanna like store a video on your website and you don't want anyone to watch it or whatever and you can just use that normal video tag but if you want them to be able to control the video, they need these. So now we can click the play button and you can see I'm watching the video. I can skip to different parts in the video. Um, over here I can control like the volume. I can make it full screen or whatever. So now we have like full control over this video. Another thing I can do is control the size of the video. So. You can notice the video is a little bit big. If I wanted to give this a different size, I can do that. So I can give this two attributes, a width, and I can also give it a height. Now, one trick is you wanna keep the aspect ratio of the video. So I'm just gonna give this a width and the height will automatically adjust to fit whatever width I'm using. So we can give this a width of like, I don't know, 300. And this is gonna be 300 pixels. So now when I refresh the page, the video is gonna be 300 pixels. So it's a little bit smaller, a little bit easier for me to see. And you can control the width and the height by just using this width property. Another thing I can do is control the thumbnail of the video. So you'll notice that 
when I refresh the page, it just gives me like a picture of like the first scene of the video. But if I have a specific thumbnail, I can also use that on here. So over here, I can just say poster. And inside of these quotation marks, I can basically pass this an image file. So over here, I have this thumbnail image. And this is actually the thumbnail for that image on YouTube. So I can actually open up my index.html file again, and I can just put in here that thumb.jpg image. And now when I refresh my page, it's gonna use that thumbnail for the video. So actually, let me make this a little bit bigger. So instead of just showing the first scene of the video, like the first image from the video, it's actually gonna give me that thumbnail. And that can be really useful. Another thing you can do is specify whether or not you want this to autoplay. So I could say over here, autoplay, and now when I open this page, the video is gonna automatically start playing. So that can kind of like be useful in certain circumstances. You can also tell this to loop. So I can say loop here. And now when the video is finished playing, like if we went all the way to the end of the video, it's actually just gonna loop back around. So it'll loop around and start playing again once it gets to the end. So you can see when I got it all the way to the end here, it started looping around. So those are a couple of the little, you know, attributes that you can pass it. And there's a couple more, I'm not gonna get into all of them. So that's how you can take a video that's just like stored locally on your computer and put it on your web page. Now, in addition to doing that, you can also include YouTube videos. So this is something that a lot of people are probably gonna wanna do. A lot of videos are stored on YouTube and you wanna just like include them into your website. And YouTube actually makes that really easy. So over here, I just have this dinosaur video. And if I wanted to embed this dinosaur video onto my website, I can actually just come down here to YouTube and I can click this share button. And then down here, there should be an option to embed. So over here, it will allow me to click embed. So I can click that. And this is actually gonna give me some HTML codes. So you can see over here, this is an HTML tag, it's called an iframe. And basically what the iframe tag does is it allows you to like peek into another website. So this will like load up YouTube's website into our website and it'll like center around that video. I'm gonna make an entire HTML video just talking about iframes. So don't worry too much about that right now. Just know that you can copy this code and then we can paste it in. And YouTube actually gives you options so you can like uncheck or check these different options and it'll, uh, show player controls or show the video title and other actions. So I'm just gonna copy this and now we can come over here into our HTML and we can just paste all this code in and we'll be able to use the YouTube video. And one of the cool things about these YouTube videos is you have all of the YouTube player controls. So like I have like the full screen YouTube button, I have like the YouTube volume button and all that stuff. So it looks really nice if you're just embedding a video from YouTube. And with these videos, you can also change the width and the height. So you can modify both of these values and make them bigger or smaller. So that's the basics of using videos. I think um, that covers most of the use cases. Either you have a video that you wanna put on your website or you wanna put a YouTube video on your website. That's kind of how you can do both of those things. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about creating lists in HTML. Now, HTML allows you to list out a group of items and it provides you with a couple different tags to do that. There's a lot of scenarios where you might need to list something out, maybe a list of names or the list of steps in a recipe. And you can use specific tags in HTML to format those lists and make them look really good. Like I said, there's a couple different types of lists that we can define and I'm gonna show you basically how you can define a list. The first type of list is called an unordered list and this is a list that doesn't have a particular order. So imagine you were making a list of just like a bunch of different items and they didn't have to go in a specific order. You can make an unordered list. So we're just gonna type UL and then we're also gonna need a closing tag and we're gonna close that off. Inside of this unordered list, we can define items for the list. So these two tags are basically like a container for the list, and inside of here, we're gonna create something called a list item. So for each item in the list, we're gonna need this collection of tags, which is two list item tags, and in here, we can just write out what we want them to be. So I could write out like a list of fruits, for example. So we could say apples, oranges, and bananas. 
right? So I'm listing out a bunch of different fruits. And if I wanted to, I could even make these list items a little bit more complex. So I could include something in here like a link. So I can make a link and we could give it an href and I'm not actually gonna give this a real address just cause I don't need to. And then I can close off this link. So you can put like HTML tags inside of these list items. You can really do whatever you want inside of there. Now when I refresh the page, you'll notice that we have this awesome list. So it's listing out all of these items and you can see this one's a link. And because this is an unordered list, we have these little circle markers that just marks each list item in the list. So that's how you can define an unordered list, but what if you want to order the items inside of this list, right? Imagine that you were writing like a recipe or something. In a recipe, you need to follow steps very specifically. So you can't just skip to like any step you want. We could define an ordered list. And in an ordered list, we just type OL and that's gonna stand for ordered list. And now what you'll see is all of the items in this list are gonna be ordered. So it's ordered like one, two, three. So there, you know, there's a specific order assigned to each element. And that order is basically just the order that these list items appear inside of the ordered list. And you can actually change the style of list. So you notice that we were listing everything out with numbers. I can actually change that. So I can say type and we can specify a type. So the default type is gonna be one, just like this. But instead of one, I could say A, and capital A is gonna mean that it's just listening it out in alphabetic. So we have like A, B, and C. I can also do a lowercase a, and that's gonna be lowercase numbers. I can do uppercase I, and this is gonna be Roman numerals or I could do a lowercase i and it'll be lowercase Roman numerals. So you can change around the style of the list depending on the type of items that you have inside. You can also embed these lists. So I could put a list inside of a list item. So let's put a list inside of this oranges and we could just put another ordered list, right? So I can make another OL and we'll close this off and I can define different list items. So I could just say like item one, et cetera. And now we're gonna have a list inside of this list. So inside of the oranges list item, we have another list and it'll start listing out things. So you can embed these lists all you want and that can be a really useful thing to do. So ordered lists and unordered lists are the two most popular types of lists you'll see in HTML and 90% of the time you're only gonna be working with those. But there's actually another list that exists uh, and I, I just wanna kind of tell you guys about it. Um, you're probably not gonna see this one as much because it's not as popular, but at least you can sort of learn what it does. So it's called a description list, and this is a special type of list where you can list out items and then you can describe those items. So you can create a description list with these DL tags. And I'm just gonna close this one off. And then inside of here, we can define not a list item, we're gonna define a description term. So this is gonna be DT. And it works just like a list item does. So in here, I could just type apples. And in addition to a description term, we can also give the description term a description. So we can describe the description term. And we're just gonna type DD. Um, and we'll end this off. And so here I can describe the apples. So I could say like hyphen, they are red or something. And now when I go over to my website, you'll see that we have this apples item in the list and then we have the description right below it. So I could add in another one for like oranges. and we'll have a couple different items with description. So this can be kind of useful if you want to, you know, have list items that have descriptions. So those are the three basic types of lists. Like I said, for the most part, you're probably only gonna be using ordered lists or unordered lists, or at least those are the most popular that you're gonna see. Um, but description lists exist and they're really useful as well. So you can now start making different lists in HTML. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about creating tables in HTML. A table is basically a way that you can format information and display it to your users. So if you ever use something like uh, Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets, you're basically working with tables and that's kind of what we're doing here in HTML. Over here, I just pulled up some images of a bunch of different tables and 
these are just examples of the kind of things that we can create when we create our tables in HTML. So you can lay out information in this table format. So the way that we create a table is by using the HTML table tag. And this is kind of a complex tag, so you wanna make sure that you pay attention to all the components that go into a table. So I'm just gonna create this table tag and then I'm also gonna need an ending tag. And so inside of here, we can put everything that we want to go inside of our table. And the most basic layout for a table is you're defining a table row. So a table row is like a horizontal part of a table, right? It's one entry into the table. And we can define a table row using these table row tags. So TR and ending tags for TR. So this is gonna represent like one horizontal row, one entry into our table. And you can define the individual data for the table. In other words, like the individual data for each column in the table by using something called table data. So table data is just gonna go inside of this tag. So I could create one piece of data. I'm just gonna call this one. And that would represent one column in my table. So this is like one column. And then if I put another table data, it would be like another column in the table. So I'm gonna copy this and we'll just paste it below here. We'll call this one two. And I'm gonna do the same thing. We'll do one more and we'll call it three. So now when I come over to my website, what I should have is a basic table with three entries or three columns in one row of information. And that's exactly what I have. So I just have one, two, and then three right here. What I could do is I could insert another row into my table, right? So I have this initial table row right here. If I wanted, I could just copy this and I could paste it right below. And now what we're doing is we're defining another row. So if I refresh my page, you can see we have these two rows. So why don't we change this to four, five, and six. And you can see that the rows in the table are formatted just like they are here. So this row was specified first and it's showing up first in the table. But then we specified this row and now that's showing up second. So that's the basics of adding data into a table. But we can also take this a step further. So if I wanted to, instead of just defining data, I could define headers for the data. So I'm gonna make another table row and over here, it's gonna stay a table row, but instead of defining table data, I'm gonna define a table header. So instead of TD, it's gonna be TH, and I'm just gonna change that on all of these. And so now I'm gonna change these. So these are gonna be like the titles or the titles of each column for our table. So I could say like num1, num2, and num3. So we're basically they have to list out three numbers and you'll see here that these are now like specified in bold. So these would be like, you know, the different column titles. And then here we have the information for each column. One of the other things about tables is that they're really flexible. So if I wanted to come over here and add in another column to the table, all I'd have to do is just copy this guy and we can just put in another table data entry. So we could say like three and a half. And so now, in addition to this three, we're also gonna have another entry in the table. But we don't have to have entries for like these table headers or for this other guy. You can just put whatever entries you want. And the other cool thing about tables is that they'll resize themselves. So as I make this window smaller, you'll see that the text inside of this table is like wrapping around and that's kind of cool. So you can compress the table and you'll still have all this information. And you can see that the information below it is actually moving down to accommodate it. So tables are actually really responsive. So you can define as many table rows and as much table data as you want. And there's actually another thing we can do, which is add in a caption. So the caption will be like the overall title of the table. So right here underneath the table tag, I'm gonna put these caption tags. And again, this is like the title of the table. So we could just say like list of numbers. And now this table will have a nice caption on it. So you can see the caption will sit like right in the middle, right above the table. And 
a lot of times what people will do is they'll make this like a header so you can make this a header too. And now it'll be like this nice big title for our table. So it looks really good. So that's the basics of using a table. Another thing that people like to do is define a table head and a table body. And this is just makes it easier for people to read through the tables in the HTML. So for example, right now it's like not super obvious that this is supposed to be the table heading. And it's not super obvious that this is supposed to be like the content of the table. So you can separate the two sections by specifying a table head and a table body. So up here, right underneath the, actually right before this caption, we're gonna define the table head. So I'm just gonna say T head. And then below here, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna end this. And now I'll just sort of indent this so it looks a little bit better. So this is gonna be all the information in the header of the table. Now we can create another tag called a table body. And it's gonna be the same thing. I'm just gonna say T body. And then we'll end the T body down here at the bottom of the table. And again, I'm just gonna kind of indent these things so it's easier to see. So now our table is laid out with a head and a body. And you'll see that it doesn't change the way the table looks, but it just allows us to format it and organize it a little bit better. Now there's one more thing that we can do with tables, which is control something called call span. And call span stands for column span. So for example, I have this one right here, right? And this is in the table. You'll notice that when we look at the table, one takes up exactly one column in the table, right? So it's taking up one column and then in the second column we have two and then three. But I can actually have one take up more than one column. So I can come over here in the table data and I can say call span is equal to, and inside of these quotation marks, I can just put an integer number. So I could say, for example, two. And now this piece of table data is gonna take up two columns in the table. So you'll see right now it's taking up one. When I refresh the page, it's taking up two now. So this one entry takes up two columns in the table and then everything else gets pushed over to the side. So I could also say like three and now this will take up three columns just like that. So you can control how many columns each individual table data is going to take up. And that really allows you to control like every aspect of your table. So that's the basics of using tables. I mean, you want to just make sure that you're using the right tags. I mean, tables, at least for me, have always been like kind of daunting because there's so many of these like little tags in there. But as long as you keep them well indented and you keep them organized, then you should have no problem. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you guys about containers in HTML. Now, a container in HTML is basically a set of tags that wraps other HTML elements. So I can define a starting and an ending tag, and then inside of those tags, I'll just put a bunch of other HTML elements. Now, generally, when you're writing HTML, it's good to wrap your HTML tags in what we would call like a wrapper tag. And that's basically just like a set of tags that sort of stores all of the HTML. And that's because when you start getting into more advanced HTML and you're looking at things like CSS, which is basically just a language that you can use to style your web pages, usually if you wanna apply a certain styling to a bunch of different elements, you can just apply it to that wrapper element and all of the elements inside of it will inherit that style. I don't wanna to get too into like CSS and styling, but just know that a lot of times in HTML, it's good to wrap up a bunch of elements into a like overall container. And in this lesson, I wanna to talk to you guys about two of the most popular containers in HTML, which are divs and spans. And those are both sets of HTML tags that you can use as containers. You can put a bunch of different HTML elements inside of a div or a span, and then you're, you're sort of like wrapping them up. Before I get into divs and spans, I wanna to talk to you guys about the different ways that HTML elements are displayed. And this is kind of an important concept for you guys to understand the difference between a div and a span. And this is also just an important concept in general when we're talking about HTML. So HTML has two basic ways that it displays elements. 
And keep in mind, there's more than two. You can get into a bunch of different other ones, but the two main ways, like the two ways that you need to know if you wanna know HTML are uh, block and inline. So CSS can display what are called block elements and it can display inline elements. Now block elements are CSS or HTML elements that take up the entire width of the page. So they're just like a block on the page. And inline elements are elements that only take up as much space as they need. So you could have inline elements like sitting right next to each other, but you couldn't have block elements sitting right next to each other because the block elements take up the entire width of the page. Now different HTML tags are gonna display differently. So some tags are block tags. Other tags are inline tags. A good example of this is paragraphs versus links. So if I was to create two links inside of HTML, I can just make a link and it doesn't really have to link to anything. It doesn't really matter. And I'll just say link one and I'll make another link down here. I'm just gonna copy this one and we'll call this link two. When I refresh my page, you'll see over here that these links are actually sitting right next to each other. So link one is sitting right next to link two. And this is a good example of two inline elements. So these links are able to sit next to each other because they're only taking up as much space on the page as they need, right? Link one only needs this amount of space, so it only takes up that much space. If I made the text in link one longer, now it's gonna have to take up more space, but you can see we can still stick link two here right next to it. These are, like I said, inline CSS elements, so they can sit in line with each other, or they can sit on the same line is a good analogy. Uh, and now I'm gonna create two HTML paragraphs. So an HTML paragraph is in a good example of a block element. So I'm just gonna make one paragraph and then I'm gonna make another paragraph down here. And I'm actually gonna separate these. So what you'll notice is unlike these links, how they sat next to each other, these two paragraphs aren't gonna be able to do that. So you can see we have paragraph one up here and even though there's enough room up here in this file to put paragraph two, it's not gonna go there, right? So it doesn't matter how small I make paragraph one. Like it doesn't matter how much room there is over here for paragraph two to go. It's never gonna go over there because these are block elements. So block elements, like I said, they take up the entire width of the page and so they force the next element to go below them. These inline elements don't do that. So with these inline elements, you can just store them right next to each other in the file. And that's the difference between the two main display types in HTML, block display and inline display. As long as you understand that concept, the concept of a block element and the concept of an inline element, then you're gonna understand what spans and divs are used for. So the big difference between spans and divs is that spans are inline containers and divs are block containers. So I can create a span and you just do it by making these span tags and we can make an end one and I can just put some text inside of here. So let's just say span one and then I'll make another span down here, span two. And what you'll notice is when I refresh the page, these two spans, in other words, the elements or the text inside of these two spans is displayed right next to each other, right? So this span is an inline container. When I make two divs, I'm gonna make div and I'll do the same thing. So we'll just put some text in here. We can just say div one and div two. And now when I refresh the page, you'll notice that these divs are on different lines. So unlike those spans, which are inline elements, these divs are block elements. So the divs can't be on the same line because they're blocks. So div one is taking up the entire width of the screen, but these spans can because they're in line. So that's the big difference between divs and spans is that divs are in line or no, divs are block elements and spans are inline elements. And these are both containers. So we can use spans and divs as containers, right? So these are gonna hold either text or they're gonna hold like other HTML elements. When you start getting into CSS, which is how you style HTML, you can actually apply styling to these spans as well. And so that's another reason why you might use a span. 
Divs are containers as well, but divs are block elements. So anything you put inside a div is gonna be like a block element on the page. So that's the basic use for divs and spans. You're gonna see these used a lot. I think probably divs are used a little bit more than spans are, just because the circumstances for using spans are a little bit more specific than for divs. Generally, if you're defining a like overall container in HTML, you just wanna use a div. And a lot of times if you see people using containers in HTML, they're gonna wrap stuff in a div. So just remember that a div is a block element. So anything that goes inside of a div is gonna take up the whole width of the screen, right? That div container itself is gonna take up the width because it's a block element. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you guys about using input tags in HTML. Now input tags are basically gonna allow you to add elements on your page where users can input information. So these are things like text boxes or text areas or check boxes, radio buttons, you know, all sorts of elements on the site that users can interact with to enter information. Now here's the catch. When you're defining these elements in HTML, we're not actually making them functional. So if I define like a text box on my website, just because I define it in HTML doesn't mean that it's gonna work. In other words, just because you have the text box there doesn't mean someone's gonna be able to type in information and you'll be able to do stuff with that. In order to like get information from a user through these text boxes, you need to use a language called JavaScript. But that's a little bit beyond the scope of this course. We're just trying to learn HTML. So I'm just gonna show you guys the actual HTML elements that you can use to define these things like text boxes and text areas. And then if you want, you can go off and learn JavaScript and you can learn how to get input from them. So down here, I'm gonna define my first input and all the inputs for the most part are gonna use the same tag. So they're gonna use this input tag. So I can just say input and I need to pass this a HTML attribute. So I need to give it some information. We can say type, and I need to tell it what type of input I want to accept. And there's a long list of different types of inputs that you can accept in HTML, but the most basic one is just text. So this will basically create a text box for us. And you notice that the input is only one tag. It's like a single tag. So we're just ending it over here. There's not like another tag, another ending tag. When I refresh my page, you'll see that we have this text box up here and I can actually just start typing in whatever I want inside of here and it's gonna be a functional text box. Another thing I can do is create a text box for a password. So something that is really common on websites is to have the user enter a password. And what you can do is you can actually hide the text that's getting input into the text box. So instead of saying type text, we can say type password. And you'll see what happens when I come up here, I can type normally in this text box, but when I type down here, it covers these things up. So now they're just like little dots and you can't actually see what's being typed inside of there. So that's kind of like a HTML way of hiding the input from a text box. Another thing we can do is define default content inside of these text boxes. So I could give this a value attribute and now we can just define a default value. So I could say like, enter your username. Maybe this is like a username prompt. And now you'll see that this text is automatically included inside of that text box without me having to do anything. Now I can also define something called a text area. And a text area is a lot like an input, but instead of just having one single line, we can have like a huge block where we can enter text. So this isn't technically an input tag, it has its own type of tag. So it's just called text area. And in here we can make two tags, so we're also gonna need a closing tag. And this text area you'll see is gonna be like a big thing that we can put our text in. So unlike these two blocks right here, this text area is a little bit bigger and we can actually resize it. So I could take this text area and make it a lot bigger on my page, just like that. And then I can you know, type in whatever I wanted into here, and that would basically be a place for me to enter in lots of text. You can also define some attributes for a text area. So I can give this a specified number of rows or columns. So I could say here, rows is equal to, and now we could say like, maybe we want it to be like 10 rows, and we could say columns. So remember, rows are going down, columns are going across, so we can say, 
columns and why don't we make this like 30 so it's really obvious. And now this text area is gonna be really big, just like that. So it's 30 columns across and 10 rows down. And you know, you can kind of just like see how that works there. And you can also define default text for a text area. So inside of these two text area tags, I could just type, uh, you know, enter a paragraph. And now that text is gonna be in there by default. So that's the text area field. And that's pretty fun. There's a couple other uh, input tags that we can look at. So there's different types of input that you can accept. Um, and I'm just gonna get rid of this value actually. In addition to accepting things like text, we can also accept something like a date. So a lot of times you might have someone like enter their birthday or something. And you can see now the browser is displaying like this little date input for us. And you get this little calendar widget. And this is gonna look different on different browsers. But for the most part, if you use this input type, you can control like what the user is gonna input. So in addition to date, we could also do like email. And email is actually pretty similar to just the text box. We could also do like a range. So this could be like a range of numbers. And you can see we have this little slider here. We could also do a file. So a lot of times on websites, you want users to upload a file and you'll see that this actually opens up my little file browser here. And I can click open and it'll like grab the name of the file. And obviously, you know, without JavaScript or another programming language, you can't actually upload these files. But the point is you can give the actual input prompt for these files. And you can also define different types of buttons. So I can define like um, a checkbox and here we just have a little box that we could check. You could also define a radio button. Actually, I wanna show you guys the difference between checkboxes and radio buttons. So if I have two checkboxes, I can check both of them at the same time. Okay, just like that. If I have two radio buttons though, And if I give them an attribute called name, so we can name radio button. So I could say button, and we'll give this one that same exact name. You can actually only click on one of these radio buttons at a time. So if they have the same name, then I can only click one at a time. So check boxes, you can click as many as you want with radio buttons though. As long as they have the same name, you can only check one at a time. We can also define different buttons. So I could define like a submit button. That's kind of a popular button that people have. So if you have a form, like an HTML form, you can define a submit button. So I can just say submit. And now we'll get this nice little button here for submitting. So there's actually a bunch of these different input types. And I have this web page open over here. This is a web page on W3 schools. And it basically just defines all of the input types for HTML. So the address is w3schools.com forward slash tag s forward slash att underscore input underscore type. And down here, there's this really good list and it just lists out all of the different types of inputs that you can have. So you see like button, checkbox, color, date, file, text, URL, all of these different you know types of like text boxes or buttons or little elements that you can use to input information uh, in HTML. So I wanna to talk to you guys about one more HTML element, which is called a form. And a form is basically an element that is gonna be used to store all of these inputs, generally. So generally, if you see people using this form element, they're gonna be putting um, these input tags inside of here. So a form is like a wrapper for uh, a bunch of user input. and. You know, as I was saying before, like when you really want to like accept input from a user, um, you're going to need an other, another language besides HTML. And that's usually where forms are going to come in handy because forms can like give information to like your web server or whatever. But you don't really have to worry about that right now. Just know that a form tag is a lot of times acts as a wrapper for these different input tags. So hopefully you guys you know, got something out of that. You can kind of got a little bit of an introduction into these different input tags. And now you can style your website so users can input information into it. In this tutorial, I'm gonna to talk to you about using iframes in HTML. An iframe is an HTML element that's actually able to display another website inside of your web page. So you can effectively embed an entirely different website inside of your own web page, which is pretty cool. So you can create an iframe tag pretty much anywhere in your site. And it's just 
iframe like that and then we need to pass this one attribute which is a source and this is going to be like the website that you want to embed so in my case why don't we just do the draft academy website and then i can close off this iframe tag and you're also going to need a closing iframe tag so you're going to need one over here now inside of these iframe tags you can put some text and this is text that's going to get displayed if the user that's on your website can't view iframes so maybe their browser just like doesn't support iframes or maybe they you know have some option toggled where it doesn't view iframes basically this code would be displayed to them if they can't view it so now when i head over here i can refresh this page and you'll notice that inside this little window the draft academy homepage is displaying but it's like super small so if you want you can come down here and we can resize these iframes so i can give this a width attribute and we'll just make it a thousand and i can also give it a height attribute and we can make this like 800. so now this iframe should display a lot bigger right so now i can see the whole website and so this website is literally embedded inside of my website so i can go to all the different pages of the website it works just like a normal website would, but it's inside of our website. So another thing you can do is you can control the border. So if you look here on this iframe, you can see there's like a little border around here. It's like this little gray bar. It's kind of hard to see, but if you want to get rid of that, there's another attribute we can pass in. We can just say frame border is equal to zero. And now this will get rid of that little border. So the iframe will just be like even more embedded inside of the website. Now iframes are really great and you can pretty much use an iframe for any website. But one thing that a lot of websites will do, a lot of like big websites is they'll prevent other websites from using their websites as iframes. So like if I tried to make this um, iframe for like Amazon, for example, amazon.com, then when I refresh the page, you'll see that nothing shows up, right? I'm not able to use Amazon as an iframe. And that's because they have some setting toggled where they don't allow their website to be used as an iframe. And kind of for good reason. I mean, one of the problems or one of the dangers of iframes is that someone else's website could pose as another person's website. So I could create a website and just have an iframe of Amazon's website in my website and I could trick people into going to my website and they would just think it's Amazon, right? So they'd be like, oh, I'm on Amazon, this is cool. Meanwhile, they're on my website and I could like take their data or you know, do something malicious to them. So that's one reason why people wouldn't wanna have iframes. And it kind of makes sense. But in my case, like for draftacademy.com, like I have no problem letting people iframe that. So it's available to me. So yeah, that's the basics of iframes. Like I said, you know, you can resize them, you can move them around and they can be a really useful feature in your website. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about meta tags in HTML. So up here in the head of my website, you'll see that I have this meta tag right here, and this is normally a meta tag that's included in most HTML, and it's specifying the char set of my file, right, the character set. But in addition to this meta tag, we can also define other meta tags. And meta tags live in the head of the HTML file, and the head is basically just used to like define information about the file or do some different like configuration with the file. And these meta tags are used for metadata. So metadata is like data about data. So we can use meta tags to define information about this particular web page. I'm gonna show you some of those different meta tags and we'll talk about like how they're used and why they're useful. So I'm gonna make a new meta tag and we're gonna call this one name. So we're gonna give it a name and we're gonna call it description. So this is gonna be the like full on description of our website. And over here, I'm just gonna type content. So this is gonna be the content of the meta tag. And here you could type like your description. And most websites are gonna have a description and this is something that can be used by, for example, a search engine in order to kind of like help to figure out what your website's about. So if you give a good description of what your website's doing, then a search engine could use that information to kind of figure out where your page should sit in like page rankings and stuff like that. And a general rule, people usually would say like maybe 160 characters for a description is like kind of good. 
Um, you don't want the description to be too long. Like if the description's over, like let's say 200 characters, then most search engines are just kind of going to ignore it or they might even like penalize you for that in, in like your search ranking. So description is very important. Just make sure you keep it brief. Another meta tag that we can use is for the author. So I can say meta name, and this is going to be author. And actually, I don't think I closed this tag. Yeah. So you can just close all of these like this. And then again, we can just define the content. So this is going to define like the con or who the author is. So like in our case, it's me. And we can also define some keywords. So this is going to be keywords and again, content. So the keywords can just be stored in like a comma separated list. So you could say like HTML, you know, tutorial, um, you know, draft Academy, stuff like that. So we're just defining this long list of keywords. And again, like the search engine could use those keywords to kind of help index your site. Now, one of the things with this keywords tag is uh, like back in the day, a lot of people would just like shove a bunch of keywords inside of there and then their pages would get like ranked on Google or Yahoo um, like artificially. So like all these pages would get ranked. Meanwhile, they had nothing to do with the keywords that were in the keyword tag. So I think probably most search engines at this point just don't even like bother looking at the keywords tag, but it can be good to have in there just in case. And another meta tag that we can use um, and this one's actually really important. And this controls how your website is displayed on uh, different devices. So we can say name and it's just called viewport. And this has a, a couple complicated little options here that we can configure. So we can just say content and you want to type out basically just this. So it's going to be with, we're defining the width and device width, and then initial scale is equal to 1.0. So this is something that you might see in like HTML files if you're looking at them. And basically what this does is it controls how your website is displayed on different devices. So if you didn't have this in here and you went to look at your website on like a mobile device, then the website would just display as it would on a desktop. So it would display like really zoomed out and really far away. And a lot of times people will design their websites to be, to look really good on mobile. So like if you design this website to look really good on a mobile device, if you didn't include this line up in here, then it's possible that the mobile device wouldn't display the website in that mobile view. It would display it like it would on a desktop. So like really zoomed out and it just wouldn't look good. So defining like the width as the device width. So the current device that's looking at it allows the HTML to kind of like respond to the size of the screen. So this is another important meta tag. So these are some basic meta tags that you can use inside your website. And there's a couple more. You could just do a Google search and kind of find like all of the possible meta tags. But I would say these like four or five meta tags are like the most commonly used and the most important for your website. Great. You have learned about HTML. Now we, I am going to create a new playlist called HTML and its usage. In our next video, you are going to see uh, how you can use HTML for blogging. In uh, later videos, you are going to we are going to build an HTML uh, basic website, and then we will learn CSS.